a great morning. Not only because the All Blacks won last night, but it's a Woo! Yeah, why don't we give a shout of praise for the All Blacks winning last night? Ah, because when the All Blacks win, we win. Ah, because you come happy to church the next morning. Ah, glory. Shout amen. amen. Shout amen. Why don't we be upstanding this morning? We're going to sing this song. I thank God. While we're singing this song, why don't you go and shake a few hands this morning? We have a few guests here with us today. So let's make them feel welcome. Don't wait for the song. You can start moving right now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Try and get to more than 10 people this morning. Hallelujah. We're going to sing this together. Let's thank and praise the Lord this morning. Hallelujah.
get up, get up. Say, get up out of that grave. Hey, get up, get up, get up. I get up out of that grave. You say, get up, get up, get up. Say, get up out of that grave. Say to the person next to you, get up out of that grave. Hallelujah. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. person we want to thank and acknowledge this morning, Jesus. We thank you for being with us. How great are you, Lord? How great are your mercies? How great is your love, Father? We want to continue to sing about it this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. The splendor of the King.
Paul writes to the Philippian church and he says, Jesus did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges and he took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. And when he appeared in human form, he lived in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The name that we are praising today is the name where when the demons hear it, they flee. It is at the name of Jesus where people are healed. It is at the name of Jesus where people are delivered. So church this morning, as we sing this song one more time, we are praising the God of generations, the God above all, the God who is a name above all names, who has the power to change and break generations and break chains and do the impossible because he is a name above all names. Come on church, let's sing it. Let's sing, lift up your hands, lift up your voice, and let's give God a great praise this morning. continue to sing that you are a great God you are the same yesterday today and forever the same great God from the Old Testament to the New Testament is still the same today you're still changing things you're still changing lives and transforming hearts and Lord we just thank you for your presence this morning we thank you for the privilege and the honor that we have to worship you we pray Lord Father God that you will continue to be in our midst that everything we do this morning will be for your glory and your glory alone. Lord, I pray that you prepare our hearts to receive a word this morning. That you will bless and anoint our speaker. And that you will prepare this church, Lord Father God, to receive from you. We thank you, Lord, for your grace, your love, and your mercy. And we will continue to glorify you all the days of our lives. Because you are the name above all names. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone say. Amen. Everyone say. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn to the person next to you and say, you look amazing today. And then have a seat. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Without further ado, we're going to get to one of the most important aspects of our worship this morning. Because worship is more than just singing and dancing and lifting up your hands. Worship is a position, an internal position of the heart and whether you're ready to receive a word from the Lord. And so I am blessed and honored to be given the privilege by our senior pastor 
to welcome our guest speaker this morning. Pastor Dave and Pastor Debbie are the founders of Great Life United. They pastor many churches. They are the father of many people. And only a few weeks ago, I believe, Pastor Dave and Pastor Debbie were elected as the youth president for the Samoan Assemblies of God General Council in American Samoa. Hallelujah. And so it is a privilege and an honor for us to have Pastor Dave speak this morning. So without further ado, church, let's give a hand for our guest speaker this morning, Pastor Dave Katima. Thank you so much. What an opportunity to be here at this great church that I have followed for many years, just kind of on the outside, looking in and rejoicing with you on what God is doing through your pastors. And I want to say thank you so much, uh, Pastor Marissa and also Pastor Annie for entrusting this pulpit to me. And uh, I promise you I will do the best that I can to convey what God's heart is to each and every one of you. And uh, I, I bring you greetings from my wife, Debbie, who is not able to be here with me this morning. She's currently in uh, Hawaii at this time, and uh, I'll see her in a few days, but she sends her love to each and every one of you to this great church. Thank you for that praise and worship. It's always refreshing to come and be part of uh, um, a, a praise and worship team who knows what they're doing. They're not here just to sing songs. They're not here just to, uh, you know, pass the time, but they're here to lead us in a time of praise and worship. Thank you, Gateway, for serving God in excellence um, from the parking lot all the way to here. And uh, even the coffee and the pankeke that I didn't get to yet, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to devour that guy after uh, the service. But uh, thanks, thanks so much. I am uh, privileged to see uh, Sister Orepa in the house and also uh, Dee and those who have been very instrumental in bringing change to our young people uh, at YWAM and all over the world. This is a crucial time that we live in and we just want to say thank you for the work that you've been doing and uh, may the Lord continue to bless you. My son Nikki is here with us this morning. Uh, uh, so he's, uh, it's so good to see him and, and just the, I'm shocked. I didn't think that he would ever choose YWAM or the mission field. Uh, but you, you know, the Bible says that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And, and I asked him, I said, so are you done? He said, no, this is just the beginning, dad. This is just the beginning. I said, okay, awesome, awesome. So you need to learn how to raise your own funds now. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. All the young ministers that are here, we're just so thankful, uh, Pastor Daniel, for um, coordinating this. And, uh, you know, um, Sana and Steve are, are ministers in their own right, but these young ministers picked me up at 1.55 this morning at the airport, so I said, you passed the test of ministry. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And just everyone that's here. But this morning, I'm going to go right into the Word. I asked uh, Pastor Daniel, how much time do I have? And I love what he said. He gave me the time. There are other people who say, oh, it's up to you. Well, however much time that you need. And then if I preach for two hours, So I love it when the pastor says, this is how much time you have. And I'm going to stay, uh, I'm going to stay right on it. Praise the Lord. Father, thank you. Thank you for spreading this table before us. And as we sit around this table to eat the bread of life, 
I pray, dear God, that you break it, just like you fed 5,000 with just a few fish and a few loaves of bread. Lord, the word that I'm bringing here this morning, I thank you that you, you, Lord God, will feed us, Lord Jesus. And we open our hearts, we lean in, and we thank you for the gracious power of God to teach us and to anoint us. Uh, we thank you that it is here, and we give you much praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. AI. AI. It's what everyone's talking about. Artificial intelligence. AI has caused people to lose jobs. AI is making us second guess everything. Is that really him speaking on the TV? Is that really the president? Or is that, you know, just an artificial intelligence copy of who he is? AI. And so everyone is raving about AI, artificial intelligence. I think in the church, it's time for us to understand that before AI, there was SI, spiritual intelligence. That has been around from Genesis all the way to Revelations. God has given us, Pastor, what is known as spiritual intelligence. The Bible says, for we have the mind of Christ. We possess the thoughts and the feelings and the purposes of God's own heart. Who has known the mind of Christ? Spiritual intelligence. Romans 8, 14. They that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The Spirit of God leads us. Spiritual intelligence. Any son or daughter of God who lacks spiritual intelligence is still part of the family. But you're missing out on a lot of what God has to offer. Spiritual intelligence. In October of last year, Pastor, I heard from the Lord and he said, this is the key word for all of your ministries, for all of your churches. Victory. I've served God long enough to know that when God says things like victory, you tend to get nervous because you know that to get to that victory, it's not going to be served to you. Victory doesn't come without a fight. Victory doesn't come without a conflict. Conflict always gives birth to conquest if you stay in the fight. So we've been saying victory, victory, victory. And let me tell you, from January all the way up until now, I have seen conflicts in our church that I feel like I was prepared for, but I wasn't expecting. How many of you have ever been there before? You're thinking 2024. And so we say things like more in 24. God's going to do some great things. But, but lo and behold, these things begin to rise up and, and the Lord reminds me, I told you, victory, victory. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57, thanks be unto God who always gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. So spiritual intelligence says there is no intelligence outside of a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you meet with him this morning? Did you meet with Jesus this morning? I tell you, I walked into this place so excited because when I met with Jesus this morning, if you haven't met with him this morning, then I'll bring you a message from him. He said, I'm about to do some great things from, from, from this month all the way to the end because you've passed the halfway point and you've proven yourself faithful, you've proven yourself strong, you've proven yourself worthy, and I'm going to begin to release some things that you were waiting for. It would have taken 10 years. God can do in one year what sometimes it takes 10 years to do. Come on, if you're excited this morning, give the Lord a good clap offering of praise. The, God, the Bible gives us such amazing promises about victory. Romans 8, 37. Yea, in all these things we are more than conquerors 
through him who loved us, Christ Jesus. Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me. So my question is, with so many promises, like what I just read, why does it seem like for most Christians, they still have a hard time grasping victory. We're going to church and we're good in this area, but we just can't seem to see victory in this area. We're servants of the Most High God. We're serving God. We're serving the church. We're walking with Him, but why is it that we still can't experience victory in this other area? Well, there are a number of things to be taken into consideration. If you have not seen victory in certain areas of your life, perhaps it's living in habitual sin. This might not be everybody, but I really believe that God speaks to each and every one of us personally and individually. And let me tell you, whatever God reveals, He heals. So throughout the next several moments that I have, God's going to begin revealing some things to you about your own life. Don't be the guy who listens to the word and says, Don't be like the girl who says, Man, this word would have been good for her, but she didn't come to church. No, God is delivering your mail just for you. Somebody say amen. So don't look to the left, don't look to the right, just be open to what God is saying. But why is it that we still don't experience victory? And maybe little habits that we have, maybe little mindsets that we have. Maybe, maybe we haven't seen breakthrough in the financial arena. Maybe we haven't seen breakthrough in, in our physical health. Maybe we haven't seen breakthrough in relationships. Why, Lord? And you know what? It's okay for you to say, why, Lord? Some of you have been asking God, why? Why is my family still like this? Why is my marriage still like this? Why is my walk with God still? Why am I still struggling? Well, maybe it could be some sin that we haven't dealt with in our lives. Here's another one. Maybe it's a lack of the Word of God. And when you lack the Word of God, I guarantee you, you don't have a prayer life. Some people say, I got to work on my prayer life. Here's what I believe. In my own humble opinion, if I can teach you to read the Word every day, your prayer life will be birthed from the Word. Why? Because what is prayer? Prayer is just saying back to God what He already said to you. Prayer is saying back to God what He already said to you. If I'm praying for my sick grandchild, I don't say, Letuai, Afayetu say malo finangalo. Say, Efa malo lo ishe watadi. I don't pray like that. That's doubtful prayer. But I pray, Lord, according to your word in Isaiah 53, you were wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, and by your stripes my son is healed. My grandson is healed. What am I doing? I'm praying, I'm praying the scripture. There's a lot of people who, who, who want to pray, but they don't know how to pray. Perhaps maybe that's why we're not seeing victory in our lives. Maybe it's weak faith. It's not that you don't have faith. Sometimes Jesus pointed out, oh ye of little faith, or your faith is weak. Why is your faith shaky? Maybe, maybe it's weak faith. Maybe, maybe it's not engaging in winning souls for Jesus. Because the bottom line is this. We're not here on this earth for our careers, our dreams. We are not here on this earth for any other agenda but to fulfill the Great Commission. The last words Jesus said was, Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, uh, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Can I say this to you? I said this to one of our campuses. If you're not involved in the Great Commission, you could be involved in the great commotion. 
you're causing commotion in the church. You're causing commotion in the city. But once we start to focus on the Great Commission, winning souls and making disciples, I said this to my son Moses the last Sunday. We were getting ready for church, and I said, Hey, Mo, I heard from the Lord. I heard him say that genuine proof of a transformed life is more lives being transformed. Because the gift of salvation is a gift that should still be given. You got saved. Somebody prayed for you. Now you got to pray for others. And you got to be led to lead those people to the Lord. And it just keeps going on and on and on. God didn't call us to just do church. God didn't call us to just be part of a big group. God called us to win souls and make disciples. Hallelujah. But then again, perhaps maybe you're walking the straight line and... and Still, victory seems so far away and so out of reach. I want to suggest to you in this message, maybe we need to check our perception, our contemplation, our frame of mind. Most Samoan houses, when you walk in, pictures all over the place. Pictures from the 1940s to the 1950s to the 1960s. I love it. And all those pictures are in a frame. We have something called a frame of mind. What is in that frame? You cannot have everything in that frame. You can't have everything in that frame. You can't have positivity and negativity in the same frame. You have to decide which one is going to be there. You can't have God and the devil in the same frame. You have to decide which one is going to be there. You can't have holy living and compromised living in the same frame. You have to decide, if I want victory, I've got to understand what's in my frame of mind. Everybody say, I want victory. So, how's my spiritual intelligence this morning? How's your spiritual intelligence? The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 12, But they who know their God shall be strong and do mighty exploits. But I want you to look at the, I want you to look at the uh, process here. They who know their God know their God they who know their God shall be strong and do mighty exploits a lot of church people want to do but they don't know because knowing comes through time they who know their God how do you know him? Spend time with him. How much time have you spent with him? They who know their God. The Bible says Adam knew Eve and Eve gave birth. That's the kind of knowing I'm talking about. An intimate relationship with God. We're talking about spiritual intelligence. They who know their God shall be strong. Some people want to be, but they don't know. But they that know their God shall be strong and then they will do mighty exploits. Don't worry about the doing. Oh, but that's what they're doing. That's what he's doing. That's what those, that church is doing. Don't, don't worry about that. God, because you know what? The way God's going to have you do something is different from the way God has other people do it. But the only way you can know exactly what he's called you to do is they who know their God. Spiritual intelligence shall be strong. Here's the problem with a lot of doers. They do things, but they're not strong. Just one offended word, one word that offends them. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm going to sit down now. Pastor, I'm going to take a break from this. Pastor, it's time. How many of you glad God never took a break? How many of you are thankful God never took a break? One, one guy texted me and he said, 
Pastor, I'm just in a season right now where I feel like taking a break. I sometimes wonder, when can I as the pastor take a break sometime? When can I step down? No, no, no. The Bible says, they who know their God shall be strong, shall be strong. And when you be strong, what you do is not just mediocre. The Bible says you will do mighty exploits. I believe that God is raising up a remnant of people who are not just going to do things that have been done before. We are going to do mighty exploits, things that the world has not seen yet, things that ear has not heard, nor eye has seen, nor has it entered into the mind of man. When you know your God, you will be strong and you will do mighty exploits. Everybody say it's time for mighty exploits. Hallelujah. Everybody say victory. victory. I was preaching in Vegas two weeks ago at my, our church there. And I said victory is not just the end result of a game or a challenge or uh, an event. The Olympics are going on right now. And everyone's going for the gold. And if you can't get the gold, the bronze, or the silver. But even if you don't have that, you're still victorious. You made it to the Olympics. And to see all of the Polynesian athletes that are doing so many great things. Aren't you? I'm proud. I don't care if they're from New Zealand or Australia or, or wherever. They're Polynesians. Yes, that's me. But victory is not just the end result of a game. Victory is an attitude. Victory is a way of thinking. Victory is a mindset. A person is victorious because of the way they think. A person is victorious because of their frame of mind. So, if I was to give you any, any, any thoughts this morning, maybe you might want to write this down. Manage my head space. Manage my head space. This part right here, right between our ears, this is, this is the battlefield. This is where it's happening. It's happening right here in our head space. So if we could manage what's going on in our head space, we won't have a problem with what's going on in this space. See, right now in America, it's hard to be an American if you cannot manage this space right here. Because so many crazy things are going on in our nation. And I'm pretty sure here in New Zealand and Australia, wherever you go, there, the Antichrist has not yet come. But the spirit of the Antichrist has already been unleashed over the earth. So the spirit of the Antichrist is what's getting people to think good about what we also used to say was bad. Isn't it amazing? Pastor, it's amazing. The things that we used to think, no, no, we'll never go there. Now we're going there. And if you don't know how to manage this space right here, what will happen is this space around you will kill you. Why? Because truth of the matter is you're defeated right here. You're victorious right here. You're creative right here. You're destructive right here. You love from here. You hate from here. Everything starts in this headspace. If you can change and take control of your headspace, you can control your life. You know when the Bible says in Isaiah 55 verse 8 to 9, you've heard the verse before, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now let me just say this. God in that verse is not saying, Pastor Daniel, you, can, you cannot think like me. God didn't say that. 
It's almost like Pastor Annie, it's an invitation from God. He's saying, hey, David, come up a little higher. You are thinking too much like the world. You are thinking too much defeat. Come up a little higher. My ways are higher than yours. Why don't you think my ways instead of the world ways? And then he says, as far as the east is from the west, that's how broad my thinking is. Come up a little higher. So he's saying, in the morning, in the word of God, in prayer, you're coming up a little higher. Why? Because you're trying to take control of this headspace. When we... When we take control of this headspace and we fill it with the word of God, what happens is we begin to think like God. We are not God. That's not the aim. There is only one God. But we begin to dream like God. We begin to expect like God. You can change your hair. For those of you who have hair. You can change your house. You can change your spouse. You can change your blouse. <laughs> but if you don't change here, nothing will change. When you change, everything changes. Until you change, nothing changes. The victory mindset is built on a continuous process of growth. Paul the Apostle, he said in 1 Corinthians 13, 11, When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought like a child. But that's a child. But I want you to see the process here. Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. Speaking first. And then I understood as a child understanding maybe later and then I thought like a child now we're thinking but we're already in trouble what got us in trouble our mouth Paul said when I was a child I spoke as a child I understood as a child I thought like a child but watch what he says but when I became grown up when I became grown up I put aside childish things so what's happening now we don't speak first, now we understand first. We think first, and then understand. And then if we need to, we'll speak. That's the sign of maturity. When we speak less, but we think more. Are you with me, church? Right thinking leads to victory. Wrong thinking leads to defeat. You've heard the verse in Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinks, as a man thinks. Now I want you to look at this because it's very interesting. Where do we think? We usually think in our mind or we think in our brain. But that's not what the wise man Solomon said. The wise man Solomon said, as a man thinks in his, as a man thinks in his, and anyone who would hear that verse would say, wait a minute, we don't think in our heart, we think in our brain. No, that's where it starts. The moment it gets to your heart, finish. That's you. Remember when we went to school? We used to say, one plus one, two. Two plus two, two plus two, two, two one, two, three, four. Four plus four, four plus four, four plus four, eight. But the more we said it, because it's up here, the quicker we got. One plus one, two, two plus two, four, four plus four, eight, eight plus eight, sixteen, sixteen plus sixteen, thirty-two. Why are you so fast? Because it's no longer here, now it's here. Now I know it by heart. See, the more you rehearse negativity, it takes an 18-inch journey from your head to your heart. And that's why the wise man Solomon said, be careful what you allow to leave your head and get into your heart. Because the moment it gets into your heart, 
Because your heart is involved. See, every time it's in your head, it's time now for you to deal with it. That's why Paul said, pulling down every stronghold, pulling down every high thought and every argument that exalts itself against the knowledge of the Word of God, taking it captive. He says, whatever you do while it's here, take care of it. Because the moment it gets here, that's your life. Spiritual intelligence. So you are in your heart what you think. Everybody say manage your head space. Look at the person next to you and say manage your head space. Are you getting anything from this? Is this helping you this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything begins with a thought. Everything begins with a thought. Olmanatu, That's where everything begins. When Osama bin Laden orchestrated the bombing of the trade centers, it started with a thought. And that thought was pondered on Pastor Steve over and over and over again and then he selected a team and then that team raised funds and then they collected millions and then they said these guys were going to take them to pilot school those guys are going to fly the planes everything started with a thought it's amazing how powerful this thing is one man said everything begins with a thought and thoughts are turned into plans and plans become reality gateway started with a thought. The music that comes from this church started with a thought. A thought that said, let's take it a little higher. A thought that said, let's not remain at average. A thought that says, let's, let's ask God to release the anointing so we can touch the world. It started with a thought. Many of you are here because a couple had a thought. Let's Let's do church differently. Let's ask God to give us creative ideas. There's a, there's a thought. One man said, watch your thoughts. They become your words. Watch your words. They become your actions. Watch your actions. They become your habits. Watch your habits. They become your character. Watch your character because it becomes your destiny. It's just a thought. As one of the Bible teachers put it, the battlefield is in the mind. Arguments are in the mind. Debates are in the mind. Compromise is in the mind. Procrastination is in the mind. Right? God always says, hey, let's do something new. What does the mind say? What's wrong with the old? Let's move forward. Yeah, but what about that old thing? Let's go, let's, let's go here. No, but here's easier. It's, it's all going on in the thought. Let's do this. Yeah, but that's going to cost a lot of money. Oh, but praise God for the thinkers in the body of Christ. Praise God for those who are checking their headspace and they are saying, God is doing a new thing. Are you with me, church? We struggle with it all the time. All the time. The world can change. Business can change. Education can change. Entertainment can change. But the church, no, no, this is enough right here. We're, we're good. Lord, help us with our head space. If you don't control your thoughts, your thoughts will control you. Evil thoughts always give birth to evil actions if they're not arrested in time. Evil thoughts are negative thoughts. Remember the guys that Moses said, go up to the land Go look at the land that, that God is, is giving us, right? Pastor, he, he said, God has already given it to us. I'm not telling you to go take it. I'm just telling you to go, go get it, go view it. So these 12 guys went up, and the Bible says that two guys came. 
Joshua and Caleb. Notice when people name their babies, they only name them Joshua and Caleb. They don't ever name them after the other 10 guys. Nobody even remembers those names. <laughs> Let me tell you, thinkers will always be remembered. Joshua and Caleb said, oh my gosh, Moses, it is amazing. Moses says, how amazing. They showed him the grapes. All on the grapes. They said it takes two men to carry one cluster of grapes. Those must have been some big grapes. But the other guy said, oh, but the giants. Some people see the grapes. Some people see the giants. It all depends what's happening in this headspace. <laughs> but what's the, what does the Bible say? Numbers 1437. The Bible says that the ten guys... In the more modern translations, it says they gave a negative report. But in the original translation, it says they gave an evil report. Negativity is evil. Negativity is evil. You have to train your mind to think good things. You know, like... Some of, sometimes you see someone walking in with a nice dress and you oh, what a nice dress. And the person with a negative thought says, but it's too tight on her. <laughs> Evil. <laughs> right? Look at how many people are here in this place. Look at how many people are here in Pastor Daniel cannot say hi to everybody. Pastor Marissa cannot say hi to everybody. But let's say it's a busy morning and, you know, and then Pastor Daniel walks right by you. He doesn't say anything to you. He didn't mean it, but right when he walks by you, you say, I knew it. I knew it. I always knew he had something against me. <laughs> he walked right by me, didn't even say anything. That's not just a negative thought. That's an evil thought. You know why it's evil? Because it's not going to stop there. You're going to watch where Daniel walks, and he walks by someone else, and you go up to that person. He didn't even say hi to you, huh? Yeah, did the same thing to me. That's how he is. That's how he is. Oh, yeah, there goes. He said hi to that person. You know why? Because that person is a little higher than us. And then the two of them say, let's watch him. Let's watch. Oh, look at that. Look, he just walked by. You go over to them. Did he just walk by you? He didn't just do that, right? He didn't just do that. Uh, yeah, he did just walk. You know why he walked by you. You know why, right? Right? I'll tell you why he walked by you. He has something against you. You see how evil it is? And it may not happen in one week, but give it two weeks, give it two months, it festers. And then all of a sudden, poor pastor is wondering, what's going on? Why is that group like this and that group like this? Evil thoughts. Are you with me? What does the Bible say? The ten came and the ten said, No, we cannot. The sons of Anak live over there. But God didn't tell you to, 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 to talk about if you can take it or not. All God told you to do was go look at it and bring back a report. And the Bible says all the people wept. Why? Because of ten people's evil report. Everybody said, your headspace. <laughs> There's a rapper back then. Uh, uh, the, remember that rapper, Pastor? Or oh, Pastor didn't listen to rap music, right? <laughs> but there was a rapper back then, DMX. He used to say, up in here, up in here. Y'all gonna make me. <laughs> Some of you wanted to sing it, but your pastor is here right now. <laughs> the only one who sang it was Pastor Steve. Yeah. It, it, it's still in his playlist when he, when he goes to work out. 
with, with the 11 minutes left, I want you to write down these three things. Capture your thoughts. Number one, capture your thoughts. The word says in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5, we can demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God and break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. And then it says we capture like prisoners of war every thought and insist that it bow in obedience to the anointed one. Every time I feel like I'm housing a negative thought, I say to that thought, you bow to the foot of the cross. You bow in obedience to the foot of the cross. Big thoughts, small thoughts, don't ever take any thought for granted. Capture the thoughts. You know, when I, we moved to my dad's house, my dad's house is probably 45 years old. It's an old house. So my wife and I, when we took the church in Samoa, that's where we went and lived. And the house there in Pango was mice infested. Mice all over the place. So my wife and I were looking on YouTube. How do we get rid of mice? And this one guy said, mothballs. We said, oh, wow. So we went to the store, bought bags of mothballs. And then we came and threw the mothballs all over the place. And in about two days, never saw one mouse again. But in three months, they all started coming back. See, we shooed them away for a while. Because mothballs don't kill mice, they just chase them away. God is not telling you to chase away those negative thoughts. God is telling you to kill those negative thoughts, to put them under the blood of Jesus. Here's what Jesus said. He said, when that devil who has left your heart, he will go out in dry places and wait for an opportune time. Maybe not tomorrow, maybe not next week, but when he sees that your house is clean, it's swept, but it's empty, the Bible says he brings back with itself seven others that are stronger than him, and they come into that clean. There's a lot of Christians who are cleansed from their past, but the problem is they're empty. They're not filled with the word of God. So they just chase the devil away for a while, but the Bible says capture those thoughts and make them bow to the foot of cross, foot of the cross. Hallelujah. Capture those thoughts. The wise man Solomon said in Song of Songs 2.15, Capture for us the little foxes that spoil the vine. How do you do that? When you own a vineyard, the vines are planted in rows. So if I'm standing down here where you are, I can't see the little foxes. I can't see them. So what they would do is they would have someone climb up in the tower and his job was to just look. Hey, there's a fox over there in row four. It's running over there right now. The workers would go and find it easier to capture that little fox because somebody is on the top seeing what they don't see on the bottom. Let me tell you what the word does. Let me tell you what prayer does. It takes you higher to where you can see things that you would never see before and the things that you could not capture, now you can capture them because you've gone up a little higher. Look at the person next to you and say, it's time to go higher. Tell somebody else, let's go higher in the word. Let's go higher in prayer capture those thoughts here's the second one create your thoughts create your thoughts don't be ruled by someone else's thoughts don't be ruled by AI thoughts don't be ruled by Elon Musk's thoughts 
Don't be ruled by the Democratic side or the Republican side. Don't be ruled by the labor side or this. Be ruled by thoughts that you create. And the Bible says in Philippians 4 verse 8, here's how you create your thoughts. Keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic, all that is real, honorable, admirable, beautiful, and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind. And fasten your thoughts on all of the glorious work of God praising him always what are you doing you're creating your thoughts create your thoughts I feel like when I preach at the uh, the at 12 o'clock I'll be preaching at the Tongan church and the Lord told me talk to them about how you can create your thoughts the woman with the issue of blood but the turning point in her life was when the Bible says she thought to herself. She created a new thought. See, the world says she's cursed. But she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, the hem of the rabbi's garments, the wings, the, 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 the sleeves of the rabbi's garments are known as wings. So I'm pretty sure, Pastor Annie, she's sitting there one day, with, wait, wait a minute, wait. Malachi 4.2, the son of righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings. Wow, this is him. And then it says, she thought within herself, if I could just touch, I don't even need him to lay hands on my head. I don't need him to see me. He's got so much power. If I could just touch the bottom of the wings of his garment, I will be made whole. And you know the story. The rest is history. She walks up behind him and she touches his garment. And what did Jesus say? Who is it that touched me? For everything that was in me has been withdrawn. It didn't start. With a crusade, it didn't start with a revival. It started with someone's creative thoughts. Wait a minute. If I could just sneak up behind, because she was not welcomed. See, just like blind Bartimaeus wore a robe that says he's blind, she wore a robe that says she's unclean. So she couldn't just show up and say, I'm here. No, she snuck in. And she was looking for an opportunity. And she says, this is my, this is my time. Because I know, I know, if I could just touch his garment, I'll be made whole. Thank God she didn't get caught up with all of the, the gossip of the day. Thank God she didn't get caught up with people. You know, even sometimes we even get caught up with people's emotions. I'm so sorry. Because she didn't live with everyone else. She lived isolated. It's too bad that you're like that. See, sometimes we hear people say things like that to us. And it blocks us from creating our own thoughts. People's sympathy. Listen, don't take shade under a tree that has no fruit. And if it does have fruit, check the fruit. Because if those fruit are fruit of bitterness, don't take shade under that. Because what's going to happen is you're going to become bitter too. You've got to create a thought and you've got to say, okay, wait a minute. Money's gone. They say there's no cure for this. But I remember hearing in Sunday school, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. The last one is this, curve your thoughts, curve, curve your thoughts. Your thoughts don't have to lead you, you lead your thoughts. One man said, just because a bird flies over your head doesn't mean you have to let it make a nest. 
Chase those negative birds away. Chase those things away. Curve your thoughts. Isaiah 26, 3, it says, But I will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are stayed on me. You don't have to let the circumstances control you. You can curve those thoughts. I may not be where I should be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. What am I doing? I'm curving my thoughts. The rest of my life is the best of my life. I'm curving my thoughts. That's what the world says, but this is what God said. That's why I believe that scripture memorization is probably your greatest weapon. Is you can always, you can always slay the enemy with the word of God. How many of you received something from the word this morning? Our time is up, but I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. If the Lord has spoken to you in anything that I said this morning, and you know that the victory, the victory has been put on hold, all because of the way that you think, and you're saying, God, I, I want to surrender. I want to surrender this, this thinking to you. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Sing that as your prayer. I give myself away so you can use. Sing it again. Give. I give myself away. really mean it Lord I give myself away so you can use me here's the thing spiritual intelligence is so needed in the body of Christ but spiritual intelligence will not come just because you're a Christian the psalmist said in Psalms 55, 17, Evening, morning, and at noon will I cry aloud and you will hear my voice. God is looking for people who will say, I'm going to give the time that I need to give. God spoke to Joshua and he said, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. Day and night. It's going to take time, but it will happen. I'm going to ask the praise team to come, and as they come, whatever song is on your heart to sing, you sing that. But the rest of you, I want to pray for you. Right after this, I leave, but this is my gift to you as the Word of God. But I also want to release over you, I want to release over you a prayer so that you can develop the victory mindset. Walking with Jesus is as much practical as it is spiritual. And so, Really quickly, if that's you, if you're a dad, come. I want to pray with you. If you're a mom, come. I want to pray. Maybe you come with your whole family. Just come and stand here, and I'll pray over you, and I'll release, I'll release what's on the inside of me in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. Yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Holiness is what you want. Yes, Lord. Holiness is what you want. Yes, Lord. Righteousness yes, Lord. is what I long for. Oh, yeah. Righteousness is what I need. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Righteousness. Yes, Lord. Righteousness is what you
I want you to put your hands on your head and I want you to declare this with me with all of your heart. I want you to say in the name of Jesus, I have the mind of Christ. I will feed it. I will develop it. I will strengthen it by the word of God. I will do what he's called me to do. I already have what he's given to me. I declare my mind is being transformed by the will of God. I will prove what is good, what is acceptable, what is perfect to that will. I have the mind of Christ. I possess the thoughts, the feelings, and the purposes of God's own heart. In Jesus' name, I have the victory mindset. Now at the count of three, I want you to give God the biggest shout and clap your hands like you've never been, before. even more than the All Blacks. I want you to give it to God. One, two, three. Come on, give Him praise. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo, yes, yes. Come on, clap your hands. Clap your hands unto the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's sing that again. Sing it, hallelujah. I want you to draw your hands toward your senior pastors here. Draw your hands toward your senior pastors. Lord, we know that we live in an hour where the enemy will do everything that he can to take out the strong men. But Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for these visionaries. I thank you for these leaders. I thank you, Lord God, that Father, they have been able to sustain They've been able to withstand in the storms that have been in their lives throughout the last several, the last season, Lord God. I don't know what it is, but I know that they have fought in prayer. They have fought in fasting. They have fought in seeking you, Lord God. And Lord God, even as they stand in this place, I thank you, Lord God, that they are victorious. I thank you, Lord God, for the creativity that you have given to them. And I come before you right now in Jesus name and I declare over every enemy every weapon that is formed against them it will not prosper in Jesus name every word that has been spoken against them I declare that every word will fall to the ground it will not give birth but father they will see the glory of the Lord here at Gateway they will see the glory of the Lord in New Zealand they will see the glory of the Lord in the different places that you have placed on their heart so father we thank you for favor upon favor for increase upon increase we thank you for multiplication and we thank you that you will surround them with prayer warriors who will keep the prayer watches in Jesus name bless gateway bless this church Lord I thank you for the new season of multiplication I thank you for the new season of increase we are so thankful for what you've already done and are doing in this church right now. 
Oh, but God, we are excited for what you have, what you have in the very near future. And we'll give you much praise, honor, and glory for it in Jesus' name. Give Jesus a clap offering of praise this morning. Hallelujah. As I turn it back to our pastor, Pastor Daniel. Turn to the person next to you and say, are you okay? Amen. Say it again, are you okay? okay? Let's say this together. Manage your headspace. Amen. Say it again, manage your headspace. Manage your Amen. What a great word this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. And uh, we'll say a few words in the back uh, after this. The last point that Pastor said was, curve your thoughts. Curve your thoughts. Two things are going to curve today. The first thing that's going to curve is that before you walk out the door, you're going to curve to the offering bag, and you're going to put your offering in the offering bag. And the second thing that's going to curve is our Samoan service. It's going to curve to 11.30 start time. Okay? And then curve your thoughts after that. Thank you, Pastor, for a great word. I pray that this word will be a seed in your heart, that it's not just something for you to hear today and forget tomorrow, that it will begin to bear fruit from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and as you go throughout this week. May the Lord bless you and keep you. We'll see you in the back. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.